Hi everybody, welcome to a 20-somethings kitchen. Let me start off by asking the question, what is the best part of any party? I'm going to talk about meatballs. Meatballs are my favorite thing to eat whenever I go to any event, whether it's a birthday party or whether I'm going out to eat. If they have meatballs on the menu, I'm all about it. So today, I'm coming at you with my favorite meatball recipe, and that is my Cajun meatballs. And this can be used for a variety of things. You can use it for a sandwich, you can use it as little appetizers, or you can actually make a pasta out of it if you want. So just make up the meatballs, the sauce we're going to be making, throw it on top of some angel hair pasta, and you have yourself a Cajun meatball pasta. Today we're just going to be making them as little sandwiches, but as I said, there's a variety of things you can do with these flavorful meatballs. So what do we have on deck? We have a lot of different flavors for this. So we have one whole onion, a red pepper, garlic, plain white rice that's been cooked and cooled. We have our crushed tomatoes, garlic paste, Tabasco sauce, a blackened seasoning. So you can either use a Cajun seasoning or blackened seasoning. I just prefer blackened in things, so that's the seasoning I'm using. We have black pepper, salt, have a little bit of Old Bay, crushed red chili flakes, and then some breadcrumbs as well. We'll go ahead and get started, and the first thing I'm going to do is cut up this whole onion just into thin slices, and we're going to saute it for a little bit. We want the onions to not be white, not translucent, but just past the point of where they're slightly getting brown because we want them to become sweet instead of bitter for our sauce that we're going to be making. So I guess I should rewind. So how these meatballs are going to be cooked is that we're going to prepare a sauce first and then we're going to make our meatballs, let them sit for a little bit and then roll them up and then let them just cook inside the sauce. And we'll get to the creating the sauce later, but for now, let's get to cutting up this whole onion. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil and put it on the stove for about 5 to 10 minutes. I have the onion all chopped up and what I'm going to add is just a little bit of olive oil and some salt and pepper. And like I mentioned earlier, we do want these to sweat down and become more sweet than bitter. And one tip to remember if you are cutting onions, I know myself, my eyes are very sensitive to the onion oils. What I do is set it in the refrigerator once I get it from the grocery store so it's ready for me to grab and go if I'm going to be cutting it up. But if you do have an onion and you're going to be cooking within the next 30 minutes, you can put it in the freezer and that will kind of help freeze up those oils and it won't make them as pungent as they would be without putting it in the refrigerator or the freezer. As our onions are cooking down, what I'm going to do is just chop up this red bell pepper and what I want to do is make really thin slices. So you want the red pepper to be in there, you don't want the big thick slices, you want it to be too overwhelming, but the little thin slices in there, along with the onions being sweet, you're going to have your red bell pepper that's going to make the dish sweet as well. It's going to combat that heat that's going to come in from the chili flakes. This is what I mean by thin. And next we're going to be chopping up two to three cloves of garlic. The garlic and peppers are all cut up here and the onion is still just sweating down. And you might think a whole onion might be a lot, but once onions sweat down and they lose that water that was in, they actually become small. So we'll probably have about a cup to a cup and a half of onions after that large onion was put in there and cooked down. So we're going to give the onions about five to six more minutes and we'll add the red bell pepper because we do want those to lose just a little bit of their crunch but not all of it. And then we'll pop the garlic in right at the end and the reason for that is that we don't want the garlic to burn because that would give it a really bitter, not so delicious taste. The red peppers and garlic are sitting with the onions now and those are just cooking together to create some awesome flavors. And the next thing we're going to do is create our meatballs. So here I have about three-fourths to a pound of beef. And what I'm going to do is take one cup of rice and one cup of breadcrumbs and just dump it all in here with the beef. So that is in there. And the next thing we're going to do is add our seasoning. So we have our blackened or Cajun seasoning. And we're going to do two teaspoons of that right into the beef. 
Next, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of Old Bay, a pinch of chili flakes, and then some salt and pepper. And then we'll just give it a mix with our hand here. After I've given my hands a quick wash, the next thing we're going to do is one tablespoon of garlic and two tablespoons of, you can do fresh or I'm using a cilantro paste. That was probably unexpected, but it gives us this really fresh flavor right at the end. And a good thing about paste is it actually acts as a little binder there for you. So to this food, we will be adding one egg. And for the egg, what I'm going to do is just whisk it up and then eyeball it. Because you don't want it too wet, but at the same time, you don't want it too dry to where the balls aren't meshing together and forming. So I'll add about half of the egg, give it a mix, and see where I'm at as far as texture goes. So it looks like I will need the remainder of the egg. You could easily make this without rice. You can just double the beef in it, or you can just keep it to the one pound of beef. It's kind of like porcupine balls, if you've ever had those, but with different flavor, and then a sauce dedicated to the meatball. So we'll just start forming the meatballs. Give it here. And we'll do about a golf ball size. So I'll go ahead and complete making those and then we'll move on to the next step of this recipe and that is building our sauce. So our meatball pile is good to go and as I mentioned earlier, these can be used as little appetizers as well. So here's about the size of my meatballs. If you want to do them as appetizers, I would just say about half the size of a golf ball. And next we're gonna to get to our sauce. So our onions, red pepper, and garlic are ready to go. And the next thing we're gonna add is a big old thing of crushed tomatoes. So I'm going to add this, some salt and pepper, a little bit of our garlic paste. We're gonna have a couple dashes of Tabasco in there. And then also four teaspoons of our blackened seasoning and a pinch of Old Bay. So I will go ahead, get those in the pan. I'm also gonna add one cup of water to that. I'm just gonna let it simmer for about five minutes and then we're gonna add our meatballs. The sauce is simmering away and now it is time to add our meatballs. So as you're adding those, be careful since it is a red sauce and it's on a heat, it's going to splurt out at you, which is the reason for my apron today. Is you don't wanna get your clothes dirty. I understand I'm wearing black and it wouldn't be obvious, but I'm trying to lead by example for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and set those in there. And what you're going to do is about five minutes on each side and then check a meatball, see if it's cooked through. If not, give it another five minutes and it should be ready to go. We're done with the first five minutes and I just pulled it off to kind of show you guys what it's gonna be looking like after the five minutes of being on the stove top. So you have your sauce that's been bubbling and you have your meatballs that have been cooking inside of that sauce. And the next step is flipping each one of them over and as I mentioned earlier, cook them for another five minutes and see what their internal color is looking like. You can see they're kind of buried in there, tucked into the sauce. So we have our meatballs all flipped here. And the one great thing is too when I was flipping them is that they are so tender, they are literally falling apart as I'm spinning them. So your meat, as it is cooking the sauce, is gonna be nice and tender. And it's also absorbing those flavors of the onions and red peppers. So I'm going to top this and put it back on our stove. So as you can see, the meatball is perfect to go. It's nice and tender, like I had mentioned earlier, and it's no longer pink in the middle. So you can go ahead, grab your meatballs, take them off the heat for a couple minutes, let them cool down, and next we're going to build our Cajun meatball sandwich. So I have a sausage roll here, and what I'm going to do is just add the meatball that I had cut up earlier, just along the bottom here. And then I'm actually going to cut another larger meatball in half. Perfect. And then from our pot, I'm just going to grab a couple onions and peppers here to dress the sandwich. And then just scoop on a little bit of the sauce. You can make it as saucy or not as you want. So there we have our Cajun meatball sandwich. Hi, hi.